200 years ago this month, David Thompson set off on an epic journey that would take him through Athabasca Pass and the Rockies. No one knows exactly what was going through his mind when he embarked on this journey, trying to reach the Pacific before a rival American fur trading company could get there. But he did give a hint when he noted in his narrative that he expected it to be attended with great inconvenience, fatigue, suffering, and privation. There was, he added, no alternative, as there was for us and several other Canadian and American groups who tried to replicate what he had done in the first and second weeks of January. In the days ahead, most would turn back, wisely deciding that it was either too cold, too challenging, or perhaps too risky to push on in conditions that worsened almost daily. We and four other groups, however, made it. Initially, there was not a lot to compare between what we faced and what Thompson had endured. When Parks Canada's Mike Dillon, Greg Horn, and I set off on January the 5th in temperatures of minus 3, Thompson and his men were already weeks on the trail, braving temperatures that had fallen to the minus 30s. The ice on the Whirlpool River was so smooth and slick in early January that we ended up walking rather than skiing for the first few hours. But this was the first week of January in the Rockies, when temperatures routinely dip into the minus 30s, when river freeze-ups often result in ice jams, flooding, and thin ice, and when icy stream crossings can be both time-consuming and dangerous. More often than not, we were forced to veer off onto the summer trail to avoid falling through. This is when we got a taste of the challenges that lay ahead. I have to admit, it was torturous at times hauling our sleds up the steep hillsides, potted or blocked as they were with big boulders and deadfall. More than once, my sled tipped over, forcing me to unharness and put things right. It was almost as bad sometimes going downhill, trying to make sure that that 90-pound sled didn't end up into the river. One also had to make sure not to fall and have the sled run over you. Mild as the weather was those first two days, the temperature began to dip on the third night when the same blizzard that paralyzed Edmonton streets began pounding us. Even eating lunch got to be difficult. In the minus 20s, cheese can harden up like marble and smoked meat can be tough to chew. Fending off the cold was also a challenge. Stripped down to a layer or two of clothing, one pumps out a tremendous amount of sweat and energy carrying a pack and hauling a big sled. The pilot light, however, goes out the moment you stop. You can see ice falls tumbling from the tongue of a massive glacier that spills out of the Hooker ice fields. Ironically, one of Mike Dillon's worst moments came on these flats. Instead of sailing along with Horn and me, he was plodding along hopelessly, weighed down by a sled that kept icing up on him. No one was happier than him when we finally got to Cane Meadows, where Parks Canada had cached a stove and a wall tent for those who were going to push on to Athabasca Pass in the days ahead. Fortunately, the skies were powder blue and the winds were calm the day that Dylan, Horn, and I set out on the final push. We took our time skiing uphill, unburdened as we were by the sleds that had weighed us down up until then. It was, however, so cold that icicles spilled out of Dylan's mustache and beard, and the bindings on my skis froze. The sun was beginning to set when we finally got to the committee punch bowl, where countless brigaders who followed in Thompson's footsteps toasted the end of the uphill slog. Wasting no time, we dug out the registry that Dylan had buried. January 10th, 2011, a Monday. Well, it's 200 years to the day since David Thompson and his crew of 13 came through the pass. We came to commemorate their passage and the formation of the first Trans-Canada Highway. We would like to salute all of those who have come before us for the last 8 to 10,000 years. Glad to see this is still wilderness. <laughs>